Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and here we talk about food photography. If that's something you're interested in, I'd urge you to subscribe and follow along for more food related videos. Uh, today we're going to be talking about editing your photos, uh, specifically editing in Lightroom. Um, there are several other software programs you can use that are free. Uh, a lot of them do many of the same things. There are more bells and whistles on some than on others. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below for some free software you can find online. Uh, they work you know, actually very well for, for free software. And uh, if, if you don't have a subscription to something like Lightroom or to uh, Capture One or one of those other, those other uh, editing softwares, then you may want to check those out. So if you've just gotten into food photography, and you're progressing along nicely and your, your, your compositions are starting to come into place and you're starting to get more comfortable with actually working with food, uh, but your photos aren't quite as uh, poppy or crisp as you'd like, uh, editing in a software program is probably the best thing to do to take your photos to the next level. Today we're going to run through four photos and how I do my editing uh, and I use Lightroom. I'm not promoting Lightroom by any stretch, it's just the software that I've used um, for the last 10 or so years, so I'm very comfortable with it. I like the way it, it uh, handles the photos and I, I like the fact that I know what I'm doing when I'm in there. So we're going to go through four of my photos and I'm going to walk you through how I edit from start to finish. Um, you'll notice as we go through that my photos are, I, I do follow kind of a very similar script to all my photos and how I edit from starting to finishing. Um, and that is kind of what I've developed over the, you know, the years of doing this uh, in my workflow is I know what my style is. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I'm trying to achieve. All right, so let's jump in and take a look. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. Uh, I've chosen four photos that we can work on um, and go through kind of my process from start to finish. The way Lightroom works is uh, you have the library module where you basically store all your photos and you do your importing and exporting from here as well, or your importing anyway. Um, the develop module, uh, which is what I use for uh, editing all the photos and you've got map and book, slideshow, print and web. I don't think I've ever used either of any of these five for anything that I've, I've ever done in my work. Um, libraries where I spend most of my time and then in the develop module, that's where you do all the editing for uh, your photos. So let's close this out and get you some more space to see. So usually when I start, the first thing I will do is crop and I'm going to crop my image to where I think uh, the, the composition works best. Uh, for this photo, I honestly, I like the way it's set up. I don't think I need to do a crop for here. Um, if I was going to do this for Instagram specifically, I'd come over here. I'd click on four by five, which is the, the native Instagram format. And I would do my crop from there. And that doesn't look bad either, but I'm, I like the, uh, like the full frame better. So I'm going to go back, reset that and let's start our editing. So like I said, I usually start with cropping, but I don't have to do that for this one. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to look at my exposure on my histogram. I kind of like where it's at. So I may leave it for a little while and come back to it after I've done some more editing down here. So the first thing I'll start with is contrast. So a little bit of contrast to my image. And that just kind of cuts the lines a little bit deeper. It makes things kind of stand out a little bit more in those focused areas. I like the guacamole here. Next, I'll pull back on highlights just to make sure that everything is visible and nothing's too bright and nothing is burned out and it stands out nicely. And you get to see all the beautiful colors and textures in food. One of the most important parts about, about shooting food is the texture itself. Shadows, I'll play with this one. Maybe I'll drop a little bit just to darken this kind of area outside here and make this pop a little bit more. The whites, I'll push up a little bit so that this again stands out a touch more. You catch the whites from the shrimp, and this is a shrimp salsa, if you were curious, by the way. The shrimp here, tomatoes, red onions, cucumber, Boston bib lettuce. And then I think, I think the blacks, I think it's good there. Looks like a nice and rich photo from here. 
texture. I'll add a little bit of texture to my photo. A touch of clarity. Vibrance, which helps kind of the, the individual colors pop. I don't use saturation as that generally tends to make everything oversaturated or more saturated. Um, if I'm looking for a very specific uh, color that I want to add or adjust, I will grab the saturation tool here and do it this way through, um, through this tool right here. You can see when you click on this and you move to an area, you know, over here in the corner on the right side, you can see the, the colors that is affecting. Um, and I don't think I need that right now. Sharpening, that's an automatic setting right there of 40. I'm going to drop it down. Uh, I'm going to set a mask now for sharpening. So if you hit Alt on a PC, or I think it's Command on a Mac, and you slide this up, it'll apply a mask, and you'll get to see exactly what's being sharpened. You don't want to sharpen the whole thing, because what that will do sometimes, or actually most times, is it'll add um, kind of grain or noise into your photo. And some people enjoy that. Me, personally, I do not. Um, so that's set now, and the, the sharpening, right about there. And that's kind of right in here, and these areas here. Lastly, I will always go down to vignettes and I will always apply a vignette and I may not always keep it, but I do like the look of the vignette with food sometimes. As you can see, I like how that's kind of darkening down all this outside area and leaving this right here in that bottom right third on the, on the rule of thirds, nice and poppy. Colors are good, nice and rich. A little bit of splash of color from the lettuce over here. that looks really good so and that's pretty much all I do and that is the the format that I will go through for the rest of these photos all right so here we're gonna do this cocktail I can't remember the name of this cocktail but I do remember I like the color and the sage that was in there so like we said before the first thing we'll do is we're gonna move into a crop and I want to straighten a little bit and I'm gonna go this one for the four by five I want to eliminate some of that shadow that's up top here. Go ahead and adjust a touch. Still keep that same four by five. All right, that's nice and set now for me on the that kind of bottom right third again. That is always my favorite, my favorite section of the rule of thirds is that bottom right. All right, so there we go. Look at that little highlight there. So one of the cool things, one of the cool features you can do is just cloning out little items, things that kind of catch your eye that maybe shouldn't be there. So there we go. Now we're going to go into our, our normal editing. I'm going to move contrast first. I'm going to come back to exposure later if I need to. I think the exposure is pretty good right now. Put on the highlights, shadows. I'm gonna drop the shadows a little bit just to darken this area here. The whites, which is these little bubbles up here. I want to make sure they're nice and crisp. Drop the blacks a touch. So I want this to really stand out. A little touch of texture, which helps crisp things up. A little bit of clarity. Same thing. Vibrance. Now I do see these two little dots down here, which I didn't notice before. And now I notice when I'm hitting the color, I want to clean those up as well. One, two, and three. And what this little tool does is it's actually pretty cool. It takes the area that you've circled, you've set your, your cursor on, and it will find a like or similar area, copy that little area, and paste it over this. That way, those things disappear, and the color doesn't change. You don't lose any of that 
um, uh, detail. There's no real spots to deal with. So that just looks much cleaner now. Go down here. I'm going to adjust the midtones just a touch. And I didn't add a lot of color to that. But what I, what I do want to do now is make that that green on the sage pop just a little bit. So you can see now the cursor here is on the leaf. And if I click down and I drag up, you can see on the right that the green and the yellow are the two colors being affected right now. And we're adding just a little bit more saturation to these. So they stand out nicely and kind of pop against this beautiful orange here. That's done. Let's see how that looks. Not a huge difference. Go down again. We'll hit the, the sharpening mask. We'll drop this down. Alt mask. And that's exactly what I want. Just that glass to be sharpened, nothing else. So if I sharpen there, maybe a little bit much. Make that nice and crisp and clean. Last thing we'll do, like before, we're going to drop in a little bit of vignette and see what that looks like. Maybe a little bit too dark on that point. I don't think this thing needs it. I think it's dark enough in the background that we can go without the vignette. And then the more I look at it now, the more I think to myself that it's just a little bit too much on the right. So I'm going to move it over just a little bit. So it's off center, but not, you know, unbalanced. I do think that looks better. Oh, maybe too. Now that I'm thinking about it. Let's add just a touch of orange, a little bit more orange. Let that pop just a little bit. There we go. All right. That's the beautiful cocktail to this beautiful Bison patty melt. Hmm. This was one I did in my in my studio in a magazine. And I'll show you how I did the edit. So first thing we do, again, go down to crop. And I'm going to actually we're gonna unrelease the lock so that I can crop how I want to. There, I'm going to go ahead and straighten it out just a touch. There we go. This area here, I don't want to touch with exposure yet because I do like the way this came out. Um, but what a cool thing you can do is here, use a radial gradient. And I can pop this over there. Rotate just a touch. And then just add a little extra exposure in that area. I can, go, I can go all the way, and that's the area that I just put the gradient on. I can go down to this way. All I want to do is just add a little bit more color in there, just so you can see that. So that's what. Yeah, right there is good. So just a little bit. So now I can go on through and do the rest of the edit, because now I can see what's in here. Exposure, like I said, we'll leave alone because we don't know what's going to happen yet with the rest of the edits. Just bring the contrast up a little bit, bring the highlights down. Shadows in this one, I'm probably going to just move them up a touch. Lights will come up a touch. Darks, blacks, sorry. They'll come down. A touch of texture. A little clarity. Dehaze, I don't worry too much about dehaze. Dehaze, I use. Uh, in landscapes, if you get a little bit of fog, a little bit of atmosphere, dehaze helps remove some of that. Usually it's not something that you really use for food photography unless you've got, you know, uh, you know, smoke or something, a, a thin layer kind of blocking this. That may help a little bit, but I rarely ever use that in food. I, actually, I don't think I've ever used it in food. Um, a touch of vibrance. Clean up the mid-tones just a touch. 
color I think is good. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to make on colors uh, sharpening. I'm going to drop a touch. We're going to go back to the mask again. And I just want to focus on just that sandwich area as much as possible. All right. Put a little crispness in there. A little too much. I want to make it look punchy. That's good. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use any vignetting on this one, but yeah. maybe a touch. So that's it for that one. And I think it's, I think it's good. Let's move on to the last one. Again, this is going to be a pretty simple one. Uh, tostadas in my wood board. Let's start at the very top. So I, when I did this one, I, I set the camera up on a, on a C stand and I basically built the, the framing, the composition, just how I wanted it in the, uh, in the, in camera. So I'm not worried about the composition here, the, the, the cropping. It's right exactly where I want it. So I can go now and just worry about making the food look good. So again, pull back in the highlights a little bit, shadows, pull back on those a little bit, make it look nice and rich here in the whites, darks a little bit, a little touch of texture. Those highlights get us making me hungry. A little touch of clarity, a little bit of vibrance. I really like where that's going. Just my mid-tones a touch. Color, there's plenty of color in there. I don't have to worry about saturation at all or any of the uh, the color sliders. If you have, if your if your photos are well lit, then color is generally not really much of an issue. A little bit of vibrance is pretty much all you need, unless you're looking for something really really punchy. Um, I'm not going to sharpen this too much to be honest with you because everything is a little bit far away, and I don't want to make it look too crunchy because it it already is quite, um, I guess more of a messy photo. And adding some sharpening might just make it seem a little bit unnatural. So I'm going to go away from there. I don't believe I'm going to use a vignette on this one. Nope. No vignette here. Because if you notice this one, I, I set it on myself in camera, the way the composition was. The edit is very simple. Not a whole lot to do here. All I'm doing is just tweaking for color and making sure that it, it, it looks beautiful. I got the focus down. I don't worry too much about sharpening because it was, it was a nice sharp, nice sharp photo. And that's it. So I hope this helped you. You know, you do get to a point sometimes when your photographs, uh, if you are shooting in JPEGs, for example, um, if you're just kind of getting started, um, they do, you know, they do tend to lack a little bit of, you know, kind of pop and crispness. Um, this is a great way to get all that back. Uh, if you're shooting in raw, you get a lot more control over the photo itself when you get it into a software like this. Um, if you're not planning on on editing your photos, then I would just recommend shooting in in JPEGs and using it that way and using the uh, the, the computational photography that you know a, a JPEG will render. Um, if you want to do some of your own, I suggest shooting in raw and going forward from there. Um, but you do have a lot more control over the photo and what you can do. Uh, in a raw format but again it's up to you what 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 you're comfortable with what your camera can handle um if you enjoyed this hope you got something out of it uh, i'd appreciate you hitting the like button and um again you know if you want to subscribe and follow along for more food photography videos we've got more coming down the road and uh, i hope you're doing well and i will see you all in the next video thanks and bye for now